Welcome, my dear students and other viewers, to Chapter 4's continuing coverage of chemical reactions in aqueous solutions. In this video, I'm going to teach you titrations. So as we discussed in an earlier video that I've linked to in the description below, acid-base reactions are also called neutralization reactions. To neutralize a base, we have to add the same number of moles of acid as there are moles of base in the solution. Most neutralization questions ask us to figure out how much acid must be added in order to neutralize a certain amount of base or vice versa. To do such questions, please use the following equation, which I will give you by university students. MANAVA equals MBNBVV. This equation. <laughs> or M sub A equals the molarity or moles per liter concentration of the acid. N sub A is the number of moles of H plus or H plus equivalents that that specific acid releases, and VA is the volume of the acid. By analogy, M sub B is equal to the molarity or moles per liter concentration of the base. N sub B is the number of moles of hydroxide equivalent that that base gives off. And V sub B is the volume of the base. You'll notice some similarity between this equation and the equation M1V1 equals M2V2 that I taught in the preceding video, linked to in the description below. Nevertheless, to best show how to use this, let's take a look at an actual problem from my homework assignment for my students. What volume of this concentration of acid solution is needed to neutralize 50 milliliters of this concentration of sodium hydroxide? And further, what volume of this concentration of HCl is needed to neutralize 2.87 grams of magnesium hydroxide? Now, I invite you to attempt these both on your own, then at play, after which I will show you how to do part A. To tackle this question, we have to start by writing out some form of a chemical reaction. I'm taking this uh, strong acid, perchloric acid, which is one of the seven strong acids that require my university students to memorize the name and the formula. I've linked to that in the description below. I'm reacting with this strong base sodium hydroxide. So I'm just going to kind of write that tentatively here. Now, based on what we've learned about strong acid, strong base reactions, what would this do? And again, I'll link to that preceding video on that subject in the description below. What would this do? Well, strong acid, strong base reactions are very much like our typical metathesis reactions. That is, they do a partner swap. So my uh, cation over here reacts with my anion over here. The sodium goes together with the chlorate, and my H here goes together with the OH there, right? So they partner swap. H going with OH forms HOH, which is another word for water. You could write it as H2O if you want. And then the Na goes together with my uh, perchlorate, OK? like that. Now conveniently, the charge on a sodium is plus one because sodium is in column one of the periodic table. And for perchlorate, it's minus one. You can kind of derive that, by the way, by knowing that hydrogen's oxidation number and charge is plus one because it's in column one of the periodic table whenever it's bonded to non-metals. And chlorate, or perchlorate right there, ClO4, is all um, non-metals. And that's, anyway, hopefully that's all clear. So I'm going to just, just do a one-to-one -one swap. I don't have to worry about any subscripts here because they all react one-to-one, -one, OK? That is a total equation. Now, the question asks us, what volume of this am I going to end up uh, getting when I react this many milliliters, 50.00 milliliters, of this concentration of sodium hydroxide? OK, so I need to just have some type of volume, OK? So my target units are going to be volume of some kind. It could be liters or milliliters of this substance. That's my target units. What am I getting at when I say that? Well, this is, believe it or not, a dimensional analysis slash unit conversion problem using the principles that we've discussed in an earlier video, also linked to in the description below. So whenever I'm dealing with something like this, a dimensional analysis slash unit conversion problem, and I'm given lots of values, I've got a value here, two other values there, where do I start? Well, my tip is most of the time, not always, but the vast majority of cases, I always start which without, with whichever value has no denominator units. Now, do you see any denominator units here? Well, you might not realize, but the capital M, as I discussed in an earlier video, again, linked to below, is an abbreviation for molarity, which is moles per liter, OK? And specifically, this is the moles of this substance per liter of solution. And so I can write that over here as well. So I've got moles of this substance, sodium hydroxide, per liter of solution. Now, can you see more clearly which of all of these values has no denominator units? Now, hopefully, you can see it's right there. 50 
0.00 milliliters. It's not milliliters per something. Ergo, there are no denominator units. So I'm going to start out by writing out 50.00 milliliters. But in order to keep things organized so that I don't inadvertently cancel out milliliters here with milliliters of something else, I'm going to write specifically sodium hydroxide because this is milliliters of sodium hydroxide. It's not milliliters of something else. Now, using the dimensional analysis slash unit conversion approach, I'm going to want to put units down here that will cancel out units up here, which means that the units in the denominator here will be the same. Now, I want to cancel out milliliters of sodium hydroxide, but you'll notice that I don't have any other units that have milliliters in them. They all have liters in them, right? And I want to make sure that I get to liters so that I can cancel out liters with liters. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to put milliliters in the denominator. Is it possible to directly relate milliliters with liters? Yeah, those are directly relatable terms. So the milliliters here can cancel out milliliters there. So I'm going to put liters up top, OK? Now, my final units, of course, are going to be some volume of this substance specifically. I'm not there yet, so I'm going to go ahead and put down another set of parentheses. I want to cancel out liters. So this is milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And although I didn't write it out, it's presumably milliliters of sodium hydroxide, liters of sodium hydroxide in the numerator. So I want to put liters of sodium hydroxide here in the denominator right there to cancel out these liters. So I need to pull that from my liters or moles per liter of sodium hydroxide. So in the numerator, I'm going to write this number of moles of sodium hydroxide for every liter of sodium hydroxide. Because that is what molarity means. I've got 0 0.0875 moles of sodium hydroxide specific in one liter, OK? So my liters will cancel each other out. Now I'm to units of moles of sodium hydroxide. I'm not yet to a volume of HCl4. So I need to sit down another, uh, or put down another set of parentheses. What will my units be in the denominator here? They're exactly the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term, moles of sodium hydroxide. Now looking at our balanced chemical equation, is it possible that I can directly relate moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of HCl4? Yeah, I can do that because moles and moles can always touch each other. I can always put moles of one thing into moles of another or relate them in, in the same set of parentheses because that's what the coefficients, these are all implied one coefficients, are for. They are a mole to mole ratio of all substances across a balanced equation. So I can put moles of HCl4 in the numerator. Okay. Now the question asks me to get to a volume of HCl4. Volume is either liters or milliliters. Am I there yet? Not quite. I'm to moles of HCl4. I'm not to volume of HCl4. So I'm going to have to lay down another set of parentheses. What will the units be in the denominator of this set of parentheses? Well, yeah, following the same pattern, it's going to be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term. So I'm going to put moles of HCl4 in the denominator there. Now, do I have any value up here that has moles of HCl4 in it somewhere? Yeah, I do. It's right here. This is 0.115 moles of HCl4 for every liter of solution. So in other words, I could put the 0.115 here in the denominator. I'm going to have to write it kind of diagonally a little bit to fit it in. And I could put one liter of solution, because that's what molarity is. It's moles of this thing per one liter of that thing. Okay? So you'll see that my moles cancel each other out right there. And I'm left with liters, and it's specifically liters of HCl4, OK? HClO4. That's my target units I'm trying to get to. Now all I have to do is place the numbers in their respective locations. What about milliliters and liters? How do I relate those two? Well, liters are about this size, a liter bottle. Milliliters are tiny. To make those equal, in other words, relatable directly in the set of parentheses, I have to remember the big number, 1,000, has to go next to the small unit. And the small number, 1, has to go next to the big unit. There's 1,000 of these in one of these. Okay, That's one that I require you, my university students, to memorize. What about over here? What's the molar ratio of NaOH to HCl4, and where do I get that? That is from the balanced chemical equation. You can see that it's 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 all the way across, which means that for every 1 mole of NaOH, I react in this uh, chemical equation. I have to also react 1 mole of HClO4. You see that? The rest of it is just plug and chug in your calculator. Take 50, divide by 1,000, get an answer. Take that, multiply it by 0 0.0875, get an answer. Take that. Divide it by 0.115, and that will get you to liters. Now, the question did not ask us what volume units it wanted. It just said what volume. It doesn't ask specifically for liters or milliliters or gallons or any other specific volume. So if you wanted to, you could go further and convert this liter answer into milliliters if you want. But it's not required because the question did not specifically ask or specify which units it wanted. It just said what volume. That's a volume, so that totally works. I'll let you do the plug and chug calculation on your own, and that should get you to the correct answer.